Okay, so let's try to first of all understand what speech writing is in um, O levels. Speech. So basically, um, speech is generally a verbal form of communication, right? But because you're attempting an O levels paper, so you're going to be writing your speech down. So we're sort of studying a translation of verbal communication to a written form of communication here. And speech writing, because we're sort of to assume that you're writing a script of a speech that you're delivering uh, in a written format that was originally to be spoken verbally. So you need to follow certain techniques while writing a speech. Number one, your speech always needs to have a good introduction. Just may you can engage the, the, the viewers or the audience, right? Always try to engage the audience. Introduction, engage your audience. And it's better that you start off by asking some questions in the introduction, okay? Ask questions. Questions that do not necessarily demand um, answers. They could be rhetorical questions. Rhetorical questions are basically the ones that don't demand answers, but you already know the answers, but they're just there to grab the interest of the viewer or the listener. And after introduction, you are to move on to obviously covering the content points. Your entire conversation has to be very real. It has to look as if you're, to, uh -huh, if you're trying to communicate with someone. You can just follow, I mean, the bag, there's no restriction in terms of paragraphs, but um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know about that as well. Okay. So in, in the general okay. style of a speech, you need to be very real. Keep it conversational. Um, it should, obviously, you're not expecting a response back at the same time, but it's sort of a one-way communication. Remember, okay, we're again um, performing a one-way communication over here. So you should always try to keep in mind that you're trying to talk to a wider audience um then maybe share experiences your own personal anecdotes or experiences make a speech very interesting because when people are re when reading your speech transcript or maybe listening to you they can they can relate to you in a much better way and then when you end up sum up your arguments um that would help people sort of make sense of what you would have said so keeping all of these things in mind, I think you sh guys should go with an introduction paragraph in the beginning, right? Um, intro could be in one paragraph, again, a small paragraph. Then you can make two paragraphs randomly for the content. And these two paragraphs would again depend on the rubric points of the question because we're following the pattern of a directed writing. Um, you can, if you're going, if you're going for an agreement side, as we've discussed so many times previously in classes as well, through letter writing and article writing approaches, that you if, if you want to go for an agreement option, so you guys can go for that. If you want to go for a disagreement, you can go for that in a separate paragraph. So in general, two paragraphs of the content, and then there has to be a conclusion at the end that will be how you end the speech. Once again, conclusion could be two to three lines and not more than that. So keeping all of this in mind, let's try to understand um, what we are uh, doing here in this paper. This is the latest exam paper, May, June, 2024, that the students just gave in the recent exam series. Let's try to read the question and see what they're asking us to do. Question says you have you have read two comments about zoos on an online blog. You've been asked to take part in a classroom debate on whether or not zoos should be banned. Write a speech for your classmates about whether or not you think zoos should be banned. So now you're going to be reading these two arguments here. One of the argument would might, I think it might say that zoos should not be banned. And the other argument will say that zoos should be banned. Now you will have to... <laughs> You have to develop your stance in the beginning, whether you think zoos should be banned or no. If you think zoos should be banned, so all of your arguments, all of the points, the person that would agree with this idea that zoos should be banned, you will agree with that person and you will disagree with the other person and vice versa. It depends on your stance in the beginning. So let's try to 
read what the these people have to say. So once again, you have to evaluate all the ideas and give your opinions and views whether or not zoos should be banned based on what you have read in the texts. So that being said, let's come to these texts and let's try to get the content points highlighted. I'm going to highlight all the content points in blue for um, the parts that say is yes, those should be banned. And I'm going to highlight the ones in red that say those should not be banned. Okay. So the first person says that nothing is better than a trip to the zoo. It is a great chance to see lots of animals that you might not be able to see in the wild without expensive overseas travel. So this is the first point that zoos allow you to um, see animals that you might not otherwise see around. You would have to travel Sir, overseas country, to, other countries, to other countries. They go, there oh. might be animal species that you not that you find in other countries and not locally. But zoos, they provide you with this a place that uh, sort of uh, keeps the animals and different types of animals that you can experience and see just by being there in one space. A visit to the zoo is also the perfect family outing for all ages. So another advantage that it is maybe uh, all people with of all ages can uh, can 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 be fond of zoos. It's not a very age specific activity. Compared to many other family activities, it's great value for money because you can spend all day there and it's fun too. So value for money, it is another benefit that if you if you visit zoos, um, it's beneficial. Why? Because um, you can you can you can be there for an entire day. It's such an engaging activity. They can you can send, spend an entire day over there. The zoo is also a great place for school trip because activities can be linked to what is going what is being studied in class. So now another point that for school trips, zoos can be a good place because students can take this as a learning opportunity, can learn about animals, right? Then, as well as the chance to see lots of exotic animals, zoos can help to raise awareness for environmental problems which are causing some species to become endangered. Yeah, so awareness regarding environmental problems, species that might die in wild can be kept in zoos and can be cared for and can be looked after. So it's a chance to maybe save certain animals sure. as well. Dear. Sahi, ek pura graph, pura paragraph ek hi wo hoga na. But we'll, we'll know about this. This can help visitors to change any shopping or eating habits which may have a negative impact on these endangered species. Zoos help to protect animals and can also give scientists the ability to study animal behavior. So now, yeah, people, when animals are kept there in zoos, scientists can study animal behavior, perform experiments and learn about the uh, animal behavior in a better way. In a way that would be impossible in the wild. Often zoos work together to share knowledge about animals in their care and to help protect endangered species. The money you pay visit helps funds all of this. Yeah, so your the money that you pay to visit zoos can maybe fund different researches. So these are all the points that I think we can pick up from this passage in favor of zoos. Now, the other person says, a trip to the zoo might be a great day out, but have you ever thought about what is it like for the animals to live in there? Zoos are often overcrowded with lots of animals kept close together. They have much less space than in the wild. This can lead to changes in their behavior. So this is an artificial environment that you create for the animals. This is not fair. Animals might be well off in, in the wild because wildlife is a natural habitat for the animals. Keeping them in zoos and in these constructed, constructed environments might be harmful for their behavior. Some animals are taken from the wild to be kept in the zoo. These animals know what it is what it is like to be free and to live in their natural environment so they will never be happy yeah they often live much shorter lives if they stayed in the wild than if they stayed in the wild so you might you might be even harming animals physical health because they, they might just die early because of the the, the constraints that they uh, live in yes sir sir of course yeah. Staff in zoos often don't have specialist knowledge about animals they care for. This means they can treat the animals badly. So yeah, this is another disadvantage. That how do you know that the people who are trained to look after the animals they're they're specialized enough? So this could be a negative point as well. Zoos are businesses, and their main aim is to make money. They put human entertainment first, and their animals often have poor living conditions. So yeah, this is another point that uh, the, the living conditions of animals are not very carefully thought of because 
the zoo's primary purpose is to provide entertainment to humans so they think on these lines in in sort of uh, uh, they they put their businesses first of course it's it's uh, there's, there's a greater chance that animal security animal living standards might be at risk while some zoos make a lot of money others rely on money from the government surely there are better ways of spending public money than on zoos so while a trip to the zoo might be a great day out for you, it certainly isn't great for the animals you go to see there. So now there are a few points that are against zoos as well. So guys, now we've read two major viewpoints when, whenever it comes to zoos. The two opposing perspectives that we have studied is that zoos should not be banned, right? Why they should not be banned? Because you have so many points that this person has, person A, Santina has given in favor. And then Raj, on the other hand, has given certain points that say that zoos should be banned. And why they should be banned, he has also given um, his points as to the, the, the problems, concerns relating to animal behavior and animal uh, living standards. Now you have to agree with one of these points. If you think zoos should be banned, you can agree with this. If you think zoos should not be banned, you can agree with this. So it's very important that after you've studied these points, you need to choose your stance. So your stance would help you develop a perspective of your own. Now imagine if you say that I agree that zoos should be banned. So your first half... Can I mention names? Yeah. Okay. Like Raj or Santina. If you agree with this point that zoos should be banned, so first half of your writing will all be about your agreement with maybe option if you think that zoos should be banned let's say if you're writing about this so your first would be in favor in agreement with raj and your second paragraph would be a disagreement with santina similarly if let's say you say that zoos should not be banned so in that case your first half of the writing will be an agreement with Not banned ke zyada points na, and cost. your second half would be disagreement with Raj. Now, this is completely up to you which side you guys want to choose to write. Now, if, I mean, you can always, dekho, even agar aap, if you go for, for banned, you might be agreeing with four points of Raj and you will be disagreeing with seven points of Santina. That means aap 11 points ki baat kar rahe. If you go with not banned, so you'll be agreeing with seven points of Santina and disagreeing with four points of Raj. Even then you are sort of covering 11 points. So the total mm -hmm. number of points would still be the same. Far kitna hai ke ratio would change. Ratio of agreement to disagreement might change. But the total number of points that you'll be covering would stay the same. So that's not a problem. And again, guys, this applies to every question. TK, this is not just about this particular paper. This applies to every paper of directed writing that your uh, question that your content points would be divided as per the ratios of agreement and disagreement. Now, because you're writing a speech, you can, and because you see, you're going to talk about, you can, let's say, if I'm talking about, uh, I'm giving a speech and my speech is all about how zoos should be banned. So I'm going to be just putting forward all the arguments that zoos do this, they're so dangerous for animals. And you can make a reference somewhere in your speech that I've read it online and this person, Raj, because this is again, this looks like a personal comment. So I don't think this is a very authentic source to refer to. You only refer to very credible sources in your writings. But because this is a personal blog or a personal commentary, TK, so I don't think these are like 14 years and 15 years old uh, children. So I don't think they should be referred as very expert opinions in your speeches. You can just make use of these information. You can just say, I've read somewhere online that people think that this is the problem and I agree with this, I disagree with this. But do not make very clear-cut references because these are not at all credible sources for citation in your work. I hope this is clear. Are you per age like you 15 years or 14 uh -huh. years? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you can understand that your uh, wo hai, online blog. Hai. Online blog is a personal commentary. It's always personal opinions. So you, I don't think you should be citing any personal opinions. But yes, information from here is taking from here. Uh, you classmates, guys, ye classmates ke speech hai. so remember, make it relevant, make it easy to understand. All of the students who are listening to a speech are of your age, 14, 15, 16 years. Okay? 
सही कंपलसरी क्वेश्चन है ना यस ऑफ कोर्स सर अगर हमारा स्टैंड हमने क्लियर कर दिया कि हम लोग एग्री नहीं कर रहे हम डिसएग्री कर रहे हैं लेकिन अगर मेरे पास उस डिसएग्रीमेंट के पॉइंट्स कम है और एग्रीमेंट के पॉइंट ज्यादा है तो फर्क पड़ेगा कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता क्योंकि अग्रीमेंट के पॉइंट अगर आपके डिसएग्रीमेंट के पॉइंट्स कम भी हैं तो आप उनको किस तरीके से डिसएग्रीमेंट बेसिकली रिफ्यूट करके लिख रहे हो दूसरे को आप टोटल तो 11 पॉइंट्स केटर कर रहे हो ना वन वर्ड द अदर एंड वो ऑल ऑफ दीस पॉइंट्स वुड सपोर्ट योर आर्गुमेंट लेट्स से इफ यू हां अगर हम एग्रीमेंट के पॉइंट्स लिखेंगे तो हम बताएंगे ना कि हाउ एवर आई फील लाइक इसलिए नहीं होना चाहिए या फिर मैं इसलिए डिसएग्री करती हूं With the idea पहले मुझे बताओ agree या disagree किस idea से give me an example तो अगर सेंटीना का देख लें और जो आपने first वाला point किया है अगर मैं ये लिख रही हूँ कि मैं इससे disagree करती हूँ तो मैं बताऊँगी कि मैं disagree क्यों करती हूँ देखो yes अगर आप सेंटीना से disagree कर रहे हो ना इसका मतलब you're agreeing with Raj that Zeus should be banned तो ये आपने you yes. आपने you're gonna clarify this in the introduction that you आप ये नहीं कहोगे I agree with Raj आप कहोगे I think that Zeus should be banned this is your perspective फिर आप बताओगे लोगों को क्योंकि यू डिलीवरिंग अ स्पीच दैट व्हाई यू थिंक जू शुड बी बैंड आप फिर ये चारों कंटेंट पॉइंट्स अपने वर्ड्स में लिख दोगे ठीक है क्योंकि यहाँ okay. पे तो वो है ही नहीं कि आपने आर्ग्यूमेंट लिखा फिर उसको इवेल्युएट किया तो आप तो जस्ट सिंपली जस्ट अग्री आप ये कैसे आई रेड दिस समवेयर दैट बिकॉज इट वॉज लाइक फर्स्ट पॉइंट ओवर हेड आई रेड दिस समवेयर दैट इज मच लेस पेस इन दूस सो एनिमल बिहेवियर माइट बी एट रिस्क and i can i think about that quite often that how do you how can you force animals to live in such constricted spaces question mark ab agla banda bhi sochega kyunki speech hai na right phir aap isna se yes. you can cover these four points and then you once you move in the next paragraph you can say however so many of us over here believe that zoos are a good place of entertainment let me tell you why this is not true phir aap kahoge okay people think that you can look, you can watch so many animals at just one place phir aap kahoge but you can use internet for that why do you have to go to zoos ठीक है फिर अगला पॉइंट यहाँ पे सम पीपल से दैट जूस इज अ ग्रेट वैल्यू फॉर मनी बिकॉज यू कैन स्पेंड ऑल डे लॉन्ग ओवर देयर सो यू यू बी लाइक व्हाई डू यू हैव टू गो टू अ जू टू स्पेंड एन एंटायर डे देयर सो मेनी अदर प्लेसेस टू गो देयर आर पार्क्स देयर आर लाइक सिनेमास देयर आर बीचेस सो व्हाई डू यू हैव टू गो टू दिस जूस ठीक है तो आप इस तरह से फिर अगले सारे पॉइंट्स को काउंटर करोगे अब मलाई का मतलब एक्चुअल स्पीच की तरह लिखना है जैसे हम स्पीच डिलीवर करते हैं Of course, actual speech ही होगी मजाक तो नहीं कर रहे हम यहाँ पे जाहिर है क्योंकि स्पीच है तो इट हैज टू बी अच तो इमेजिन की आप okay. अपने आप को उस पोजिशन में रखो कि यू आर इन इन अ क्लास एंड यू आर टॉकिंग टू द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ दैट क्लास एंड यू आर डिलीवरिंग अ स्पीच तो आपको अपना आइडिया और ऐसी कन्वे करना है ठीक है थैंक यू और जो आपका पॉइंट था कि मैं अगर डिसएग्रीमेंट के पॉइंट ज्यादा हैं सेकंड हाफ में मैं उनसे ज्यादा को डिसएग्री कर रही हूँ बजाय जितनों से मैं अग्री कर रही हूँ दैट्स कम्प्लीटली ओके क्योंकि आप उनको डिसएग्री क्यों कर रही हो उन ज्यादा पॉइंट्स को क्योंकि आप अपना बात बताना चाह रहे हो यू अगैन एंड अगैन ट्राइंग टू पुट फॉरवर्ड योर स्टैंड एंड दैट इज द रीजन वाई यू डिसग्री विद दोस पॉइंट सो दैट्स हेल्पिंग यू आउट दैट्स नॉट ए प्रॉब्लम ओके सर हम अपने से भी एक से दो पॉइंट लिख सकते हैं आपके अपने से सिर्फ इवेलुएशन होगी दैट द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज अगर आप कहीं ये कह रहे हो कि जैसे एक इस बंदे के इस पॉइंट से अग्री हम कर दिस अग्री कर रहे हैं दैट जूस इफ द पर्सन से दैट जूस इज अ गुड वे टू लुक एट एनिमल्स तो आप कहते हो नहीं दे नॉट अ गुड वे टू लुक एट एनिमल्स व्हाई डू यू सेइंग दैट इसकी तो रीजन आप दोगे ना राइट right? इसकी कोई तो रीजन बनाओगे ना आप आई होप दिस मेक्स सेंस टू यू गाइस जी सर यू हैव टू स्टार्ट विद गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन ठीक है अब यहाँ से स्टार्ट करेंगे एंड देन यू कैन जस्ट कीप ऑन राइटिंग स्पीच ये डायटेड राइटिंग ही है लेकिन स्पीच इज जनरली आई मीन दिस पेपर वॉज वेरी इजी गाइज ऑनेस्टली इस तरह इतना स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड पेपर के सीधा सीधा दो परस्पेक्टिव मिल गए आपको दिस वॉज अ वेरी इजी पेपर बट अगैन दिस इज अ वेरी गुड पेपर टू इवन स्टडी फॉर स्पीच इज और फॉर एनी फॉर्म ऑफ डाइटेड राइटिंग बिकॉज इट हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड अग्रीमेंट डिसग्रीमेंट इन अ वेरी क्लियर कट मैन बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ द पॉइंट आर देयर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एस टू डिफरेंट व्यू पॉइंट्स and you can just just pick up one of these and just develop your stance very easily there's no uh what is the last paper that we did on uh, uh, overthinking that was a very twisted paper because there was a lot of manipulation or um of ideas that was required from your from from you but in this paper you don't really require a lot of manipulation it's pretty straightforward so it's a very good paper to uh, develop your style of uh, directed writing and to understand um the complexities of this uh, assignment okay 
So make make the most of this paper. Try to get like try to achieve as many marks as you guys can. ताकि हम इसमें से जितना सीख सके हम इस पेपर में से सीखना चाहिए हमें एंड एज अ स्पीच दिस पेपर सर्व एज अ वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज यूर राइटिंग टू योर क्लासमेट्स यू नो अ वेरी गुड ऑडियंस यू कैन रिलेट टू दैट ऑडियंस एंड देन द व्यू पॉइंट यू गाइज हैव देर ऑल्सो कमिंग फ्रॉम अ पर्सन ऑफ योर एज ब्रैकेट so that's that's even wonderful because you guys have an opportunity to directly agree or disagree with the arguments that are given to you and and you're able to very much relate to these arguments so please make the take this opportunity and make the most of this learning opportunity that you guys have and try to try to get done with i mean try to get a very good understanding of speeches through this write this get it checked by me so we can work on these these structures after you guys are done with the assignment and one more thing before we uh, move on to the writing part you need to in speech you need to follow certain expressions of language as well because you see speech mein kya hota hai there are certain points that you repeat there are certain things that you speak loudly there are certain things that you speak slowly there are certain things that you speak in a lower voice guys anything that you think you should be speaking a loud voice you can write down in capital letters anything that you think you're going to be speaking with gaps up dashes ke sath likh sakte ho that Do do you understand? Do you understand? understand? Now this means that you're speaking this thing slowly. आपको verbal expressions को you should know how to write them down. Yeah, if you let's say speaking something loudly, zoos should be banned. तो आप इसमें लिख दो zoos should be banned. That means you are trying to stress on the importance of this point. एक्सक्लेमेशन मार्क्स का यूज करें ठीक है डैशेस का यूज करें तो यू शुड बी यूजिंग ऑल ऑफ दीज लिंग्विस्टिक एक्सप्रेशन टू मेक योर वर्क इवन मोर अंडरस्टैंडेबल ठीक है यू कैन रिपीट सर्टन थिंग्स दैट इज वाई आई थिंक जूस शुड बी बैंड जूस शुड बी बैंड दो दफा लिखा एक ड्रामेटिक एक्सप्रेशन क्रिएट हो गया ठीक है तो यू गाइज कैन वर्क ऑन दीज लाइन्स आई होप दैट्स क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू नाउ you supposed to start working on this we can also sir, look... uh, yes sample papers de sakte hain teeno writings ke ha why not why not fir hum print karwa ke ek dafa pad lenge taki 